Welcome to Two Local Radio. I'm your host, Ray Ray. And tonight we have Knoxville's Supreme Blues Band. If you haven't heard of them, I don't know where you've been hiding. This is the Juke Joint Drifters. Say hello, guys. Hey, how you doing? What's up, guys? Hey, man. How you doing? Hey, everybody. And, uh, you know, the first question I'm going to ask is a simple one that everybody who's never heard of you is going to want to know. Where the heck did you come up with that name? It's a Blake Campbell. going to answer that one. Jeremy, you going to take that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Blake Campbell came up with that out of the top of a, a marquee on Bill Street in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, he was at... They've been out to Austin, Texas, on the way back, stopped in Memphis, and uh, the juke joint sign on the Bill Street, and he, uh, that's where he got the name Juke Joint Drifters from. True, man. Oh, wow, and and what what does that name mean to you, other than, you know, where it came from? When you think of your name and what your band means, what does it mean to you? Just a, uh, just a collaboration of... Uh, Feelings and how you feel, and uh, just uh, you know, blues and and rock and roll is what it is, you know. Kind of a, kind of a combination of uh, of everything, you know. Just uh, we, we, when you hear us live, you're going to hear every every influence that every one of us has ever grew up with. It's uh, you know, the two joint kind of where we started in the blues, but it uh, we drift we drift all over the place. It's you know, southern rock and funk and. So just a little bit of everything. Oh, okay. So, so how did the band get established? Where where did you all meet each other? Uh, mostly just playing around in, in bars in Knoxville, Tennessee, you know, and just eventually through the circuit, we just, you know, by faith we met each other, you know. I think you have to give some credit to Rogers. Um, that's where I met you guys. That's where I met Johnny. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was uh, definitely, definitely like you know, that's where Blake and I first uh, played together. And uh, when we just had decided to start doing a band, and we he had had the idea for Juke Joint Drifters, and then uh, friend, a mutual friend actually suggested that we meet up because uh, Blake was looking for uh, for somebody to help start a band up. So we met up, and then uh, a year or two later, we crossed paths at the Rogers Blues Jam, and. Uh, from there, we started our own blues jam at another venue across town called Bullfeathers, and uh, kind of started playing out some. And uh, that's when Kevin and Andy, uh, we called in for meeting them at Rogers. And they come out and played, and uh, it just kind of grew into that. And later on, we met uh, Johnny at the same place, and uh, we kind of just grew grew into what we are now. That that's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, what can I, I understand that you uh, are a blues band and whatnot, but uh, what what kind of songs do you mainly play? Are you more of um, uh, you know, uh, lights going down, or do you you know your songs about women? Or for people that have never heard of you, you know, and have never heard of the Juke Joint Drifters, which is really a tongue twister if you think about it. <laughs> What kind of music would they expect? And uh, well, like, so the blues we kind of started out as, as blues. It's turned into a lot more than that now. You know, it's it's close to the more like what, southern rock, uh, you know, blues rock feel. But the, you know, the songwriting it just uh, and it just comes from life. You know what I mean? It's it's women. It's uh, good times. It's bad times. It's uh, you know, living the core of you know of life as far as you know friends and family and uh, backwoods, hard hard work and tradition, you know, just things like that. And I'm on you know, Blake. He does uh, most of the writing, and he's, uh, I guess he can answer where he pulls for, from himself. But uh, just life in general, man. You know, that that's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Um, I think at this point what we're going to do is we're going to play uh, Say Yeah, and we're going to come right back. And I got a bunch of other questions for you. All right, that sound good, guys? Yep. All right. That'll work. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
All right, and we're back with the Juke Joint Drifters. All right, so there's currently five members in the band, correct? Yes. And who do we have tonight? I know we got Jeremy Copeland, who's the vocalist. Uh, Blake Campbell on guitar. Yeah, and Johnny on the other guitar. All right. Kevin Redding, drummer. All right, so we got four out of five tonight. Yeah, did I? Yeah. I guess so. <laughs> and Andy's very shy. <laughs> <laughs> Andy Lewis on bass. I, I, I don't know where he's at. He was. I thought he was with us. <laughs> All right, so uh, you you know uh, I, I'm looking here and it said uh, you know you were talking before how you all met and everything. And it says, uh, at the CRV experience at the Blues Jam in Knoxville, is that correct? Yeah, that was a project that I, that I had. Um, it was a tribute to, you know, the late Stevie Ray Vaughan. And, uh, you know, the band I was with, we'd done that for a couple of years. And then, you know, basically I just kind of wanted to, to do my own thing. And, you know, this was kind of what it eventually, you know, was built into. So, uh, wh- why don't you tell, uh, you know, the audience out here, uh, you know, what's it like, I mean, as far as, like, your fan base and the people that come to your show, I mean, what what kind of what kind of fans normally, you know, would pop up to your show, and what kind of experiences do you, do you like, as far as, are you more of, you like uh, jamming in front of a few people, or, you know... Like a place, like a friend's house, or in front of a big coliseum. What what really makes you get your adrenaline going and really just want to pump out for the crowd? Well, that's just like you know, uh, that's just like Elvis Presley said, man. That Elvis always got nervous, and you know when he played in front of five people, you know, uh, you know, and just like when you play in front of five thousand people, you know, it's just like your adrenaline's flowing, and you know you just. You just do it, you know. You just get it done, and you know, and you know. Thank you know. Thank the fans for coming out, pretty much. I think a lot of it too is you feed up the energy of the of the crowd, you know. And if, if they're feeling what you're what you're playing, they're feeling the music and the lyrics you've written, and, and uh, 
and you know, and up and dancing and moving around, you know, that that, that does a lot for, for me at least, as far as just feeling the energy off the off the room, you know, whether it's and the crowd that comes out uh, to see us is a crowd that likes to drink, raise hell, party, and have a great time. There you so, go. <laughs> Sometimes we get a little too involved in that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there have been occasions. <laughs> but at the end of the day, that's really what it's about, you know, uh, you know, going out and having fun. I mean, a lot of people, you know, go for different reasons, but so you'd say your band's more of a, you know, a feel good, you're down on your luck, come see us and come out and party like a rock star. Pretty much. Yeah, we definitely. We'll definitely and we're all about having a good time. Exactly. So, uh, why don't you tell everybody what was, what is, uh, say yeah about, it and how did that come about? Man, uh, well, I guess say yeah kind of come about. The, I went to Blake's house for a writing session. We uh, when we started writing for the album, and uh, he'd come up with that with that beginning intro and uh, that beginning riff. Uh, he played it for me and. And I sat down and just started scribbling some words, just mainly just trying to come up with something. And uh, I kind of pulled from experience I had a couple of years ago uh, with a friend. I went out to uh, Nashville to see another band play uh, by the name of Anthony Gomes. And uh, just kind of wrote just real simple lyrics down, just something to try to try to come up with. They kind of stuck, and we ended up taking them back to the guys and showing them what we had, and uh, built built on top of them from there. You know, everybody kind of helped uh, in the writing process, and we we added part here, a piece here, and then when Johnny joined the band, you know, uh, he added his solo in, and, uh, you know, he's definitely, that's Johnny Monster, and you can definitely hear it when you hear him play, so. Yeah, I, I totally agree, and that song, it's, like, very catchy, as well as, you know what's funny, is a lot of bands, the vocals is catchy, but the music behind it just doesn't feel it, and, uh, and that song that I heard, it just feels like it all comes together. You just know that everybody's on the same page. Yeah. yeah they, I think, uh, I think one of the reasons for that, that you hear that, I think you'll hear that just about everything we do. And part of that's because of the creative process that we go through as a band to come up with a completed pro, um, product. It starts out typically with Jeremy and Blake or one or the other coming up with the basic idea. Um, and we just all formulate it together from there as far as arranging, uh, where we want to take it, how we want the song to start, um, what we want to do in the middle, how we want to end it. It's a total collaboration by everybody. And I think that that's one of the reasons that we're all committed, and you hear that in the type of music that comes out. Would you agree, Jeremy? Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that completely. It's uh, you know, everybody's everybody's got their their input or say so, you know, and you know, and we're, we're just like a big family. We'll we'll argue and bicker, and at the end of the day, man, when the music's done, it's uh, we're usually real proud of it. You know, we finished product usually comes out the, the way we like it. But what was that? Uh, comment used perfect. to make Blake. Yeah, Blake used to make that comment about, hey, you know, if you're not arguing about it, probably because it's pile of crap yes. or something. <laughs> we, uh, well, we'd watch a, a video, of it and I think it was Slash that said, if you're in a band and you're not arguing, you probably suck. But, you know, if you, if you're all, if you all agree that that's you're, it. if you all agree that, that it's the, it's the best that it's after, it's probably not. So if you're not bickering and trying to make it better, then you, you probably don't have much to work with, you know. Y yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's a good way to say it. <laughs> <laughs> after he had to deal with Guns and Roses, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a dysfunctional band. But, so how long you all, uh, you know, been together? We're looking at uh, two years now? Uh, actually, with this, with this lineup, we're right at a year. Okay, a year. And what would you say so far is your biggest show you played? Couple, we had a real, real good crowd at Rogers one night. You know, we played, uh, we played all over now. So we played in you know, Orleans, we played, uh, played Rogers, we played uh, Susan's Happy Hour. Uh, but I'd say probably 
one of the biggest crowds was probably the Mardi Gras party that we had uh, back in February. But we actually re- we actually recorded we released the CD recorded live at Rogers Place. Well, we're just now starting to get some bookings and some festivals and uh, summer events that are going to be subject to a much larger crowd. So we have right. yet to go down that road. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're actually playing for uh, the Popcorn Sutton Memorial uh, Memorial Festival in, Ju- in July, and we're playing for another festival in Cock uh, County in October. So we're just kind of starting to get our uh, ball rolling, getting into some bigger bigger venues, getting our name out there a little bit more. So we've only been together a year, so uh, we just got back from Sun Studio in March. In Memphis, where we had tracked to say yeah and agree with me, so it's just you know real, real new as far as uh, this project goes. About to go right back in the studio. Yep, yeah, we're going to be finishing up the album in, Ju- in July. Nice, nice. Well, I, I don't see y'all having a problem whatsoever. Y'all seem professionals and like you know what you're doing because y'all came from different bands, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, right. He's played. He's played. Uh, you know. For years he's played for about anybody you can think of or, or around him or near him. And, or Johnny just joined us from from up in the New York area where he was uh, running his own solo project. So uh, we just we all come from different backgrounds, man. And that's what kind of makes it so cool. Is you know, we all got our own our own strong influences, but we put it in the in the melting pot, man, and it just turns into you know the JJD. That sounds like a. <laughs> Like Jack Daniels with an extra J. Fast virus database has been updated. Fits <laughs> right in with us, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they say that you can tell a lot about you know an artist based on who their influences are. So who alive or dead, if you could play with, would you play with or perform with? Oh, me? Like, if Stevie Ray Vaughan was alive right now, I'd be calling that dude up right now. Be going, hey, we need a jam, dude. <laughs> 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 I'd and what about the rest of the band? Oh, I'd play with Ryan Cooter. If I could get with him. Yeah. yeah I'd, I'd like to, I wouldn't mind getting on stage with the. Uh, but John Froey, I'm a big Froey fan of Chris Robinson, Black Crows. He's uh, probably one of my favorite vocalists. Just, uh, just yeah. Raw, raw Great emotion, gig. You know? Great music. And you got the drama going on, too, there. Yeah. <laughs> Keep you on your toes. Yeah. That's kind of like Chris and Chris and Rich Robinson. That's a little bit like being Blake. We, we, we spend time as Sticker on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Only one way to get it done, man. <laughs> At the end of the day, we're, end of the day, we're right back in there doing what we do. So, all right. So, what would be a day off from music and you know uh, other jobs? What, what where could the fans see members of Juke Joint Drifters doing on a day off? Uh, I'm on my Harley, Harley riding in the mountains myself. <laughs> You'd catch me cooking. I don't want a restaurant in Kingston, Tennessee. Yeah, I, um, you know, I um, help run a, a concrete business, and, you know, we get to spray concrete all day, so. Just He's talking about time. a day off, guys. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Exactly. <laughs> that is a day off. A day off. I, I, I think it's just a day off. To, I'd be trying to catch uh, Kevin on his bike. <laughs> 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 Good luck. You guys be over at Andy's house. Exactly. Yeah, we, we'd be at Andy's house, what we'd be doing, eating, eating <laughs> breakfast probably... and drinking fireball. Right <laughs> That sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Isn't it funny, though, in this uh, shitty economy that uh, on a day off you're actually working? Yeah. yeah that's, that's how it goes normally. 24-7 job, man. Pretty much. The new culture. Yeah, it, it's not a right culture, but it is what it is. So, no doubt. Really, if you're if you're trying to be a musician, you're working every day anyway. I mean, I, I, even if I ain't working or gigging, I'm playing my guitar if I'm not hiking. You know what I mean? So, and if you're working as a musician, you're booking shows and getting radio stuff like this. So, really, if you're a musician, you're always working. 
it just is the way it is, you know, unless you got somebody to work for you, which then you get a day off. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, but you all know how that goes. You get somebody to work for you, and then they fuck up, and then you gotta work twice as hard to fix it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a true old adage. If you want something done right. <laughs> so, you know, coming from all these different bands and everything, could you see uh, that the music has evolved as far as you know now? From when you started, that's absolutely the uh, the, the writing process itself is just uh, it's you know as we started doing it together, it was every made other little parts of like Kevin said, you know, a lot a lot of the earlier stuff was was, was Brian Blake's idea, or a lot of it was Blake's you know all, only had done before we even really got started, but then we started writing stuff like Freedom Song and Live It Up, and, uh, you know, just everybody was just kind of pulling like Freedom Song. Uh, you know, Andy had come up with just for an idea that he'd, he'd run across and, and live it up. Come from like a, you know, just a real bit of a dream that he'd had. He woke up in the middle of the night and jotted a couple of things down, and, uh, and it turned into a real, real cool song. But yeah, the, the music has definitely evolved into a completely different monster of its own. It's uh, it's kind of hard to, to pin it to one genre. It's it's kind of floats, it drifts, it just drifts all over the place. That's kind of why, why it sticks real well with our name. Nice, nice. So if you were not musicians, and I know you all have, you know, other jobs, but if you could work any job that you wanted and you were not, you know, a musician or you just hung it up, what would you do? I don't want to do something with music. If I couldn't be a musician, I'd, I'd want to get involved in music somehow. So probably, uh, I'd probably try to be a promoter or, uh, you know, manage, manage a band. I'd, I'd want to be involved in it somehow. Yeah, some sort of entertainment you know, business, you know, acting or something. I think I'd just stay home. <laughs> <laughs> you and your dog. Yeah, yeah I you and your dog too. Okay, I have a question that you're never you're never going to hear anywhere else. With the music industry being the way it is today, and artists getting screwed left and right on deals, would you say you know as a band? And I know you all want to get you know signed to a major label and everything, but would you say you would head down the independent route if you've seen that you were going to get screwed and there's a possibility you could end up on the shelf? I don't, I don't know, you know, it's, uh, the music industry is a, a tough industry to be in, and, uh, you know, as far as being on an independent label, you know, I think you have a lot more uh, freedom to do what you want to do, you know, and, uh, you know, as far as getting your name out there, but, you know, when you're with, too much with a major label, you're always spitting out songs that, you know, nobody likes, and everybody, you know, you, you basically get where you're playing the same stuff over and over, and, you know, that's what a label wants, you know, is, you know, make millions of dollars, you know, and, but, you know, it's, you know, as far as the band, you know, you really don't want to lose the raw sound of the band, you know, and think back on the commercials, you really lose a lot of that. Or the, or, or the actual emotion and feeling of the music, you know, for, for me, I, you know, of course, I'd love to, I'd love to make it big, but I, I also there's a fine line of making it big and, and losing who you are as a musician and, and, and turning into a piece of other, you know, uh, up and pop top stuff you hear on the radio today that you know I, I personally just don't care for. I, I don't have any. It's got no soul. It's got no feeling, and that's kind of what Big is about. Is you know bringing bringing back that that era of when music meant something, you know. And so I, I would want to I would want to keep the I'd want to keep the music before I would take the the, the thing, you know, for me personally. Well, in that's today's better. environment, what I what I prefer to do is be self produced and then sign a distribution deal. Uh, the days of signing with a label and expecting gold and gilded lilies is long gone. And uh, you have to make it pretty much on your own anymore. I'm a big fan of anyone that can do that. Yeah, I don't know about do it yourself, but uh, um, I mean, it'd be great to, to have 
mean to be my job, but honestly, I'm a old school guy where, man, I just started this to have fun. And honestly, the only one of the reasons I play with these guys is because I moved here a few months ago and I wanted to have some fun. You know, like that's the main reason I do it, and that's what will be the reason I do it. And the minute I stop having fun is when I will stop. You know, so I don't think too much anymore about record labels or any of that. I mean, distribution would be great, but you know, all that's such a long shot. You can waste a lot of good energy, you know, wishing for it or whatever. You know, just be out there gigging. I mean, my favorite thing in the whole world to do is gig and to tour. You know. Well, Johnny, you know, just to be a musician in today's world, there's got to be something wrong with you to start with. I mean, you got to be somewhat crazy on a certain level because you're you're right. You know, the odds are such a long shot of anything successful going along. The bottom line is you have to love it. Because if you don't love yeah. it, you don't have fun doing it, there's absolutely no motivation whatsoever to get involved in this stuff. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, you got to have a few nuts loose. To definitely to begin with as well as love it you know there's a lot of crazy people out there <laughs> and you meet them <laughs> playing music <laughs> that's true yeah. but I don't know I, I agree with all what everybody said I just you know I, I think the main thing we all that we all think is that it's just it's a lot of fun to start with so that's you know no matter what that's why we're still all here doing it that we enjoy each other's company but in the end it's all about the fun we have making music together, really. Right. Uh, it's probably true for just about any band that's out there that isn't dealing with all the stress and drama of a big label situation. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to flip uh, the the turn here, or the tide here, because I, I didn't want to go negative in any way, shape, or form. I just wanted, you know, individuality, which you all showed, which is great. Um, let's say... You get everything that you want. In five years, where could you see yourself? Um, on, on tour, you know, maybe touring regionally. You know, uh, playing playing a couple couple levels of bunches, but where we're at now, you know, this is hopefully you know, playing the you know the PG theaters and the and the you know, Tennessee theaters of the of the country, and just. Maybe even a little smaller than that, you know, just playing some of the bigger music music. But like, like Johnny said, you know, it's just having fun, still, still, still enjoying the music and, and enjoy sharing the music. Because like Johnny said, when that's gone, you kind of, kind of lose it all when, when you when you quit enjoying it. You, if you can't if you can't enjoy your music, how can you expect anybody else to? Yeah, for me, it's just a matter of um, if if I could make a comfortable living playing music not have to deal with uh, the stress of a real job, yeah, I would be a very happy camper. On this motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> On my motorcycle. Up but the I'm mountains. Yeah. And AJ, I've, I've, I've got a question for you. Who? For who? For, for the DJ. I've got a question for the DJ. Oh, for Ray? Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, how many guitar players does it take to play a Stevie Ray Vaughan song? Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, how many guitar players does it play take to play a Stevie Ray Vaughan song? I, I, I would say at least three. No, yeah, apparently all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, yeah, but he's just in a different world of his own. It's like, you know, uh, how how many, you know, does it take to play Randy Rhodes? I mean, you can go to, you know, Dimebag Daryl. You can go a lot of different ways. I mean, there's some that are very, very talented. Oh, yeah, yeah. Dimebag and Randy was one of my favorites as I was growing up, you know. I, I do know my stuff, believe it or not. It was a shame that what happened to Dimebag. The music world really took a loss when they lost that guy. Yeah, that stuff happens, man. Stuff happens. All right, so we're going to uh, play the other song, uh, another song I have by him called uh, Dream. 
and we'll be right back and we'll finish up and just stay tuned okay the heartache Cause baby you can't stop the pain We go to hide We're back. All right. Um, it looks like um, we might have lost somebody. Uh, oh, well, there, guys. <laughs> All right. But, uh, you know, who's ever uh, left? So, uh, no, I know now in, uh, you know, Knoxville and whatnot, they, there's a lot of, uh, club owners and everything. They ask, uh, you know, bands to play covers because that's what people, you know, know. Um, what would you say is the toughest cover you had to, you know, play or, or have you been one of the lucky bands that get to play all your original music? Mostly original, and then what covers that we do do are, are uh, you know, really obsolete covers. So, uh, so we don't we don't really do a whole lot of what we call jukebox band stuff. Uh, and we're trying to work a little bit of that in there because you're right, that, you know, people want that. But uh, for this project, we kind of started out wanting to, to be original and do you know, do all original material, and uh, that's kind of what we we're trying we're trying to stick to. You know, we we have added some some stuff in. You know, like uh, we just we worked up "Give Me Back My Bullets" you know, by Skinner, and uh, anytime you anytime you try to cover, you know those those classic guys like that, you know it's uh, you know if you can't do do them justice, you know you might as well not try. This is kind of the way I look at it, you know. And, uh, you know, but we we, we want to be an original band. We don't we don't want to be a jukebox band. Well, there you have it. They want to stay original. 
So what would you say so far is your favorite uh, original song that that you each uh, have and why? I guess probably Living Up is probably the best one. I think it's the most uh, unique and um, it's the one, it's kind of the first one, first and only one that's based off of the riff I had, you know, as a new member in the group, you know, so it's kind of a little bit more part of me than the other songs are. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely uh, one, of, one of my top ones. I, I'd probably be torn between Say Yeah and Freedom Song. Uh, you know, uh, Say Yeah, I guess I've always just loved to feel that. And Freedom Song, I, I just kind of love the meaning of it. You know, it's uh, just, you know, about, you know, just being free and, uh, you know, starting over and, and moving forward and, you know, uh, standing up for what's right type of thing and just, you know, get getting out about riding them. Find the Harley and hitting the road and, you know, just going scour bound, just heading on out down the road. So, uh, be torn between those two. I don't know about Blake. What do you think, Blake? <laughs> uh, maybe who we lost. Lost Blake? That's the lost Blake, yeah. All right. I'm, I'm only hearing you all two talk. I, I know there's... Well, there's a third, there's a third one here. Kevin, you pulling the Johnny card, brother. <laughs> the Johnny's usually the quiet one, man. Yeah, I'm always telling Johnny to shut the hell up. <laughs> he never says nothing about nothing. <laughs> Well, I hope he left uh, due to technical issues and he wasn't bored. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he. Uh, I actually think, I actually think he's at uh, at a gig in town. He was he was playing in, so he was probably at the park where his phone could have died. Yeah, uh, it's understandable. So, this is something I ask everybody. Now, anybody that's, you know, trying to get into the music business and, you know, uh, start a blues band, uh, what advice would you give them about how hard things is and, uh, you know, to keep their head up? Because it's not easy to play in front of people and it's not easy to deal with people, especially some drunks that are, you know, very belligerent. You have to have a thick skin. You have to have a lot of confidence in yourself. And you actually do have to have an ego to be able to get up on stage and do this to start with. Um, there's varying degrees of that, of course, but all the components have to be there. And after that, it's just a matter of you've got to love it. You've got to feel it in your heart because there's not a whole lot else out there to keep you motivated except for yourself and your own drive. That would be what I'd say. I'm with you, Kevin. Don't look the crazies in the eyes, though. <laughs> don't, make, don't make eye contact from the stage, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny, Jeremy. <laughs> so, so what is your favorite part of being a musician? Maybe. Applause. Yeah. That's my favorite that's part. When you know you've executed what you went up there to do, and it's truly appreciated by the audience, and they let you know that, there's no better feeling on earth than me. Yeah. I like when you do those small super gigs that nobody comes out to, but then you meet that one person that you connect with, you know, the one guy that sat at the end of the bar and just sat there and enjoyed it. You know, it's, uh, it's a shame that the place wasn't packed, but, you know, like the saying is, is if you reach one person, you're doing all right. And if the one person in the bar really... Just I genuinely enjoyed it enough to at least come up and say hello. That's huge. You know, I've done a lot of shows with only one dude. <laughs> I think we could all say that, Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's just how life is sometimes. You know, sometimes it throws you uh, lemons and you have to make lemonade, or I like to say apple cider. Right. 
Got to think outside the box sometimes. So, has there been a time where, you know, somebody came up and, you know, been like, okay, you, that song really touched my heart or was uh, inspirational to me? Yeah, well, we've had, I mean, we've had people come up and, and, and relate to songs. And uh, well, there's, a, there's a girl that uh, shows up one of the venues all the time that really likes to you know, have our show, I Love You team that we do and that. Uh, so it's uh, like I said, we're so new, we're just we're just now getting it out there. Uh, so we're, we're definitely starting to starting to build a little bit of a of a following as far as people re- relating to it and, and recognizing the songs by name and, and knowing some of the words and stuff. Yeah, we expect that portion of things to continue to grow as the band's exposure does. Right. All right. So, you know, as a band, you know, times are, you know, tough. Can you relate to a time where, you know, the crowd just wasn't feeling and feeling it and you just, uh, you know, turned turned even a one head around and, you know, it just felt so good. And, you know, what what's an experience like that like, whether it's in this band or any of the bands uh, before? Is that what you mean? That's what I mean. Yeah, I mean, that, that, uh, it's a, it's kind of a bittersweet feeling, you know, I mean, um, you kind of, if there is a lot of people that are not paying attention, you know, you kind of wish they all were, but, I mean, like I was saying, you reach that one person that, that, at the end of the night, that's huge, while you're playing, it's kind of hard to deal with, you know, you just kind of have to push through it and play your heart out, you know, but. Um, I mean, I've had a lot of experiences, you know, I played at a pizza place where everybody watched TV and then some guy came up and shook my hand, you know, and says, he really touched me, you know, that's great. You know, and that makes the night, that makes the night, it makes the fact that you just, you know, you're in the hole for gas and that nobody paid attention, you know, because you cut somebody's heart with something that you created, which is a really powerful, hard thing to do sometimes. Not everybody has the ability to do that. <clears throat> That's very touching the way the way uh, you said that. Is there anyone that like to add anything to that? No, I I agree with that. I mean, we've we've played before, and and, and it feel like nobody's paying attention. And uh, I can remember being, being we played uh, right before Johnny had uh, had joined the band, and uh, we played, and it didn't seem like no matter what we played, we you know we just we wouldn't get a whole lot of crowd response. But at the end of the night, we saw a lot of people come up and, and tell us that they enjoyed it, and. Uh, and, uh, you know, things like that. So uh, sometimes, you, sometimes you're paying attention and you don't know it, you know. Well, yeah. yeah it's, when, you really, when, you really, when you really read something that really, you know, was connected with, with one of your songs, well, that's, uh, well, that's completely different feeling all in yeah. itself. People are uh, kind of different in audience today. Sometimes you really can't, can't read them because you'll play, like, the whole night and think that you're just not reaching anybody. And at the end of the night, you got several people or the, the owner of the club or whatever will come up and say, man, everyone loves it, thinks you guys are great, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, what? <laughs> Where'd that yeah. come from? Right. So sometimes well, it's a they? pleasant surprise. Yeah. Well, you have to keep in mind in this day and age of the, you know, Internet, the tablets, the, the you know, texting on the phones, everything else, people are doing like 500 million things at once. They all these complicated lives anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's no simple route anymore unless you're born into it. <laughs> well, there you go. So, so do you all have any uh, last minute words? And before before that, uh, how can people get in touch with your music? That's the main reason why you're here, so people can find out who you are. Right. Yeah, they can. Uh... They can look at this up on Facebook. We're, uh, you know, of course, Facebook. Uh, we just search for the Juke Joint Drifters. On, uh, best way just to go straight to our website, jukejointdrifters.com. Uh, you know, they can buy our, 
they can buy CDs, they can buy T-shirts, a bunch of stickers. Got a schedule on there throughout the rest of the year. We've got close to 20 shows uh, booked from now to, to December, and uh, you know, DukeJointDrifters.com can tell them anything they need to know about us. Band bio. Yep, band bio. Of course, uh, good information. And as far as last words, I'd like to thank everybody that tuned in tonight and listened to us. And uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed what you heard. And please come out and see us if you're in the area. We'd love to meet you. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, Kevin. Yeah, good job, Kevin. Well, thank, well, thank you, gentlemen. Way to be there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, someone had to do it. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, we... <laughs> Well, I've enjoyed uh, you all, uh, you know, on here. Unfortunately, I'm bad at with names sometimes. But, uh, you know, JD, JJD or the jo- Duke Joint Drifters, that tongue twister again. You know, it's been a pleasure. And I look forward to later in the year, you all coming back and you know, touching base and see how much you've grown, you know, with the band and, you know, the crowd's reactions and everything. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, We would love to come back, and we certainly enjoyed uh, this time with you tonight. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you for joining us on uh, Two Local Radio. You all have a wonderful evening, and uh, thank you again, and I do apologize. It's just tough when you have three or more people to remember everybody's names. We won't hold it against you. <laughs> you not to next time, right? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for having us. Have a good evening. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful evening. Good night.